Okay, blood pressure. Um, this is a difficult thing to get your head around, actually. Um, those of you who carry on and do um, A-level biology, and <laughs> you see what, what's really going on with the heart, it, it gets quite complicated quite quickly. But we can um, look at this in, in two ways. I'm going to look at a simple version of it first of all. Um, so what's going on? Your arteries, which we know, hopefully, are carrying uh, blood vessels that carry blood away from your heart. And this nice thick wall made of elastic fibres uh, and muscle. Elastic meaning stretchy. So as the blood gets forced through this gap in the middle, that artery is going to whoop, stretch wider and then because it's elastic and stretchy, it stretches back. So as the blood's pumping through, they're constantly doing this. Okay, so the pressure is is pushing out on on that um, on the inside wall as the blood goes through. That's what it's doing. Okay, so that's what we we mean when we talk about blood pressure. Um, it's usually well, it's quoted as two numbers. Um, I'm going to give you a typical value here. A typical value, you'll see it written in slightly different ways, but I'm going to write it like that, 120 over 80. And I think that's worth remembering. It's a typical value for an adult. Uh, blood pressure does vary. It can vary um, the time of the day. It's generally lower first thing in the morning. It can change if you've just eaten. It can change if you're under stress. It can change if you had a cigarette. It can change if you've exercised. But as an average, you know that, that's fairly typical and, and fairly healthy. Um, the reason it's such a big deal, blood pressure, and the reason we um, talk about it so much, is it's an indicator of high blood pressure. Uh, sorry, <laughs> high blood pressure is an indicator of um, increased risk of heart disease. And all the things we, we talk about for heart disease, all the um, risk factors, smoking, stress, um, age, uh, alcohol consumption, saturated fats, all that kind of stuff. All the, uh, in all cases, what they're doing is raising your blood pressure. So all those things, the the, the big issue is it you, you end up with high blood pressure. The the medical term for it's hypertension. Hyper means above. Um, you can get hypotension. I'll put that one on there as well. Hypo meaning uh, below or under. Hypotension. Um, when would you get that? Well, you know, let's imagine you had a, a, a severe trauma um, and you were bleeding a lot, so there wasn't as much blood in your body. Your blood pressure would drop a lot. Now, generally, you know, hopefully you'd know if that was the case and, and you know that you, you've got a problem. Hypertension, high blood pressure, is not visible. It doesn't have any particular warning signs. The first sign you often get um, is things like pains in the heart, pain in the chest, or even a heart attack. So there's no visible signs of that. We can only get it by measuring it, and that's why it's such a, a big deal. Um, this value up here, by the way, you might have your own blood pressure measured, and you find that it's very, very different to these values. Uh, it's nothing necessarily to worry about for younger people, you know, under 18. Um, these values tend to be all over the place, and you would need a different sort of scale, and you'd need a, a, a medical professional to tell you if there were any worries about it. So just in case you thought, oh, well, I've, I've had mine measured, and it was nothing near that, um, don't worry. Okay, so the simple version of it uh, is um, the, the higher number, the top number is always going to be higher. That's the number when your heart is contracting. And the bottom lower number is when your heart is relaxed. Okay, um, I'll go into this a bit more detail in a second. But if you just want to remember that, that's fine. Um, and blood pressure is, is taken by measuring the, the pressure in an artery, it's the brachial artery in your arm. Often done on your left arm, doesn't actually matter too much. Um, your right arm's fine by it as well. Okay, so those are the two things that we're looking for. Is it a high value? There, there, there is actually a number for that, that would be um, sort of 139 over 95 is a, an indicator of high blood pressure, hypertension. And that would be a warning sign in an adult. Um, all things considered. Okay, so what's going on? Well, first, just to mention these these numbers, they have an odd unit. It's millimeters of mercury, which is an old-fashioned measurement of pressure. Um, you might come across pascals more now, or even um, things like newton meter squared and so on, uh, which are, are more modern forms. But doctors like to use this, and you know who are we to complain? But that's what it is millimetres of mercury. It's a measurement of pressure. Um, 
the heart itself, if you've looked at the heart or if you remember, it actually comes, let's just draw a bit of an iffy heart. It's got four chambers in it, two ventricles at the bottom as they're called, two atria at the top. It doesn't all just squeeze at once actually, the, the atria squeeze separately and then the ventricles, which give it the big boost, they, they then squeeze. But as far as we're concerned, that big push as the blood comes shooting out of the arteries, that's the big number. Uh, the the systolic number as it's sometimes called okay the very high one and so the systolic is the one at the top the diastolic when the heart relaxes now this is a bit awkward to get your head around your blood is continually moving through your body but it's not in a smooth even um, flow like this it pulses so it moves boom 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 you know kind of little jumps so the systolic one is when you've got the maximum pressure as it's really been pushed through. And then as the heart's relaxing, it's still moving, but there's not as much pressure in there. You're not forcing it through as much. That's why the diastolic is lower. Um, if you were to look at the artery itself, I'll draw an artery with its nice thick wall again. Um, as the blood goes through, it's going to get bigger because you're pushing you know, all that blood through there. There it goes. Um, and, and that's why, you know, that, that when you feel a pulse, if I, I feel the one on my wrist, which is just about uh, there, if you, you can't do it, it's between this outside bone, your radius, and those stringy tendons. If you just put your fingers in there, you can just about feel it. It's not, not massive. Um, this is happening all the way through your body. Every artery is doing this. It just so happens at certain places, like in your wrist or on the side of your neck, um, it, it the artery comes close to the surface and it runs over the top of a bone and you can feel it, but it does actually pulse all the way through your body. Um, the recoil, there's a good word, of these um, walls, the elastic recoil, so it you know, pushes through and then it stretches, it, it, it recoils back, it stretch and recoil, stretch and recoil, it helps to move the blood around. Um, as you get older, you lose some of this. It, it becomes less recoily and stretchy, if you like. Okay, so instead of nice and big and recoil, it's just not moving as much. Unfortunately, it just happens as you get older. It's made worse by things like smoking. Um, but you know, as you get older, um, your blood pressure will naturally tend to get high. This is why a lot of older people take things like aspirin um, to reduce this blood pressure and various other drugs to reduce it. Okay. Um, high blood pressure, if you continually are pumping through high blood pressure through these arteries, um, it damages the wall. And once it starts to get damaged, you get uh, a buildup. Here's a, a common misconception. People think that, it, that fat just starts building up in the middle here. In fact, the first part of it is that it builds up in the wall and it's like a bulge. If you've ever had a, 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 seen a tire in a tube on like a bike, where it gets damaged and it, it kind of bulges out. Um, that's the problem really, it's damage inside the wall caused by um, high blood pressure. Um, and eventually this stuff can kind of, kind of burst out and it's all sticky and then stuff gets stuck on it. That, that tends to be the, the problem with things like coronary heart disease, which is when a coronary artery is, is this occurs in there, or a stroke, which is when it's an artery in your, your, your uh, brain. You know, it's the same, exactly the same principle, stroke is brain, heart attack is, is obviously in the heart um, so that's that's basically what's going on with it it's quite a tricky thing to get your head around you know all these things are happening if you can remember this bit about the, the big numbers of contracting the small numbers of relaxing great and it's measured in artery fine if you remember this stuff about systolic and diastolic and you know what's going on this this idea of it uh, the damage in the wall is quite important you know people always say oh yeah your, your artery fills up with fat Talk about your coronary artery, the wall bulging out. You know, that's a better answer. Um, and this idea, hypertension is a good word to use. It means high blood pressure. It's an indicator of risk. Someone with high blood pressure does not necessarily instantly have a heart attack. It just indicates they're more at risk and you might need to um, change their lifestyle factors, smoking, drinking, you know, all that stuff. That's what it's indicating to you. Oh, I should just also say, uh, when you measure this stuff, the way it's measured is when you squeeze that um, that thing on your arm, the cuff, it squeezes the gap shut. Um, 
and then it slowly lets the pressure off until the gap just opens again and it listens for the noise when the blood starts to flow and doctors will do this with a stethoscope sometimes they listen for it and that's the first number that's the big number that they take and it continues to let the pressure off until it's completely open again and it makes a different type of noise and that's when it takes the second measurement or the doctor hears it and, and listens in for that second measurement